Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about Lament, which is the first study on the grade four cello exam by Trinity. So first of all, let's talk about the mood. It's marked Lament. So it's, it's um, a Lament is a sad song and it really is very, very sad and very soulful and doleful and all of those words full of sadness, full of gravitas, and no, no instrument better portrays this than the cello, than the mellow cello. I just love the first note where it starts off in the open C. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Enjoy that first note and enjoy the last note on the lovely long C. And at the very, very end, I love just parking my bow, so slowing it down and then just lifting it holding it, freezing for two seconds, and then relaxing. So it's like you're saying to whoever's listening to you, to the examiner, you, you can't breathe until I finish the end of the note and I move my bow. Now you can breathe, that sort of thing. So you hold the magic until you lift your bow off the string. So I love those notes. So enjoy the open strings. In bar two and bar four, we have lovely open Gs as well. And um, what else? No. Well, why don't I just go through it and we'll, we'll discuss it, um, things as we come, come to them. So at the very beginning in bar one, make sure that you differentiate between the um, first dotted crotchet group and the second dotted crotchet group. The first one is dotted. And the second one is even noted. Sometimes uh, my students would go, just be careful of that. It's actually dotted first time, then even. So watch out for that. In the penultimate bar, you have both dotted crotches marked. Um, dotted. So um, just be careful of that, that those little, for those little pitfalls. The whole piece is in 6-8, so it has a lovely lilting quality to it. Um, I play it round about, um, crotch equals 40. Um, so it has a, a, a lovely lilt, uh, an in two feel to it. So, um, one other, th yeah, so, one other thing to mention is that it's in a horrible key signature. So it's in C minor, so that has has lots of uh, flats in it, three flats. So um, watch out in bar one for the second finger, E flat. Uh, in bar five, the E flat, which is back. And um, what about, there's an A flat in bar eight. Uh, so, and a low A flat, so watch out for that. There are a couple of little cheeky B naturals as well, such as in bar six, uh, and also in bar nine, uh, watch out for those. And also in bar 11, uh, there, the last in bar 11, so watch out for that. A little point about the bow distribution. So in bar two and four, I mentioned earlier, we play lovely open Gs. So, however, the first one's long, the second one is short. So we've got to get back to the bow again. We need to be at the heel of the bow for bar three. So what I do is I do a little swell. And then what I do is I let the bow retreat a little bit towards the fingerboard. And then I do a really, really fast and light bow on that quaver. So, so here it is again. So what we don't want to do this is one, two, three, four, five, five, four, two, three, four, five. Four. We don't want to sort of make that note stick out like a sore thumb. So swell on this note, uh, and that means that you don't use as much bow as you would if you just played it really solidly. It also is a lovely shape, you know that. Uh, which also would be very in keeping with the piece. And it means that you're not quite on, for, as far as the bow, 
um, you're not too far down the bow, and then and then you haven't got as much bow to recover. So play a little bit closer to the bridge, and with a fast light bow, and that brings you back to the heel of the bow. And it doesn't stick out. Watch out also for the shifts as well. So there are quite a lot of shifts. So the first one is in bar six. So you got to so from the G up to the B. So that's going up to fourth position. So what I tell my students is, is to do a little um, uh, anti-clock, sorry, clockwise mo motion with your wrist, which takes you from the G up to the B. You can do it with your arm. I tend to do big shifts with my arm with that motion and then smaller shifts like this one with my wrist. So it's just that sort of movement there. So that's actually a really nice um, little exercise you can do just to, uh, to make sure your wrist is nice and flopsy wopsy and you're not holding any tension. It's sort of doing that little circles, doing little circles with your wrist. Um, so that's fine. And then... Uh, doing is I'm using a guide note. So we're going to, we start on a four, going to three, but what I do is I put my three down. So I'm putting an extra F sharp in, but you don't hear that F sharp. And then here's the extra note. And then I shift up to the three afterwards. So um, if I speed that up. So I'm not signing up with the four and at the last minute changing to the three. Uh, after, what I'm doing is I'm putting the putting my take my four off at this point, putting the three down, doing the circle, and then look that little motion with your elbow or your wrist helps you just to uh, make that shift effortlessly in a very ergonomic way, as Stephen Doan would say. So that sort of thing there. Check out some of Stephen Doan's videos. They're they're wonderful. Um, a very famous um. American uh, cellist and cello teacher who has been a big influence on me amongst other people. So that's that. Then what about the way down? So bar seven. So there, there is the process in reverse. So you're going from a four, but just do a four. So no, no little guide notes there. So again, we're doing a, we're going to do, um, on the way up, we did a clockwise motion, but on the way down, we're going to go anti-clockwise. So all the shifts are prepared. So we're going to go in that direction, down the cello, what we call down the cello. Um, but we have to go forward with our, our elbow, first of all, like that. And that whips us back. Um, there's, there's a little diversion into third position in bar seven, eight. So you've got to... So, so again, a little guide note. Put the one down below the two. And then go up to the, the one there. So, slow motion, but you don't hear this note, but take the two off, keep the one down, because you're going from a one to a one. And if I speed that up, you don't hear it at all. So what I do is I just lighten the bow, so, and I make the, the uh, shift quite fast as well. So those two things disguise the guide note. And the purpose of that is to help us to avoid taking our hands off the neck and going into outer space somewhere. So it makes all of our shifts very, very secure. Um, bar nine is interesting in terms of shifts. So you get a one, still in third position, and you're going to put a two, F. So what I do is, I do, I, I what we do is we're going back to another um, guide note, so E flat this time, below the two. So we put this extra note in, so, and then flip forward to the two, so. See how that works, and then in, in tempo. Did you hear that? Bar 10, watch out for the little semitone shifts. So we're going from first position into lower second position now. There. And the next bar, same thing. And then, then we're going to go up into fourth position. Then back into first. Onto that beautiful last note.
Okay, so let's go all the way through it from the beginning to the end and I'll shout out some things for you. Why don't you play along with me? So here we go. So before you start, it's often nice to sort of feel the into pulse and to get to imagine yourself, get yourself into the vibe, that sad vibe, that lament, that sad song. Give yourself a little into with the bow. So one, two. So everything's prepared in the cello. You're gonna start on a down bow, but you do an up bow beforehand. So I do, I do one move, place, play. And I go from this shape to that shape by dropping my wrist. So everybody's different, but that's what I like to do. It helps me to get the weight from my back down into the bow. So have a look at that. One and a two and a... And breathe out with the first note as well. It's... um. Always nice to get rid of tension, and that's a great way. You know, you might, whenever you breathe, you might realize, oh, I'm holding tension in my neck, or I mean, I'm lifting my shoulder, or something like that. So, one, move, place. Fast, like, oh. Here it is again. So you've got to try and make the examiner reach for his Kleenex toilet tissue and blow his nose because he's sobbing so much because you, you, your performance was so moving. One other thing I thought of while I was playing that was the, uh, the wise words of my cello teacher, Mr. Um, Robert Irvine. And he said to me, Scott, Whenever you want to play loud, what you've got to do is do this with your eyebrows. And whenever you want to play uh, soft, you go like this with your eyebrows, laddie. As he was eating some haggis. And uh, can you guess where he was from? Yes, he was Scottish. <laughs> I hope my, my accent wasn't that bad. But it's very true. Why is that? Those are very wise words. Whenever we want to play quietly, I often find myself doing this with my eyebrows. I don't know why, but uh, I don't really, I just do it. And whenever I want to play loudly, I often, you know, do this. That sort of thing there. So bar 10 is amazing because look, you've got, you got high eyebrows with the, as it starts quietly, it gets louder and then you can go like this and then, you see there, so try that. Uh, on their own. So you could even try that in front of the mirror. You could practice this, um, that exercise, the cello exercise, doing this with your eyebrows. Try and make them really expressive like that. Do that every day. Do, why don't you do 10 press-ups, you know, like Joe Wicks every day in the morning or before you start practicing. Do that with your eyebrows like that every single morning and give them a little workout. And you too could play bar 10 like that. So I think that's all I have to say about that piece. It says that you have to focus on tone and phrasing. Yeah, so tone. So yeah, just make it really, really sing. There's lots of bow. I just love that note. And what about the phrasing? Yes, well, the first phrase lasts for four counts. If I was singing it, that's what I would do. I'd take a breath there. So if, if I speed it up, two, three, three, four, that's bar four. I take a breath here. <gasps> but then uh, you don't take another breath to the end. So there's nine bars. So take a big breath. <gasps> You don't literally have to hold your breath. I'm only joking, but that's 
probably where I would take the next big breath. That's where it feels right to take a breath. It's unusual, you know, usually um, phrases are quite uniform in pieces, but in this one, I don't think it is. So watch out for that because you know the examiner with his beady eyes will be watching out for that. So just remember every single note is not just one note followed by another note all in isolation. Try and make a lovely long shape. Uh, so listen to the first phrase of... Uh so broken up and cut up but you want to make it sound like you're going to sing it so the examiner will be listening out for that very intently so um, all the very best for your exam I hope you ace it and um, loads of my students opt for the studies option um, because it means they don't have to memorize scales some some people are better at memorizing scales than others so I know when I started off, I wasn't very good at that, but uh, I, I feel I'm a lot better at it now. So it's definitely a viable option. So please um, look out for my next video on the next two uh, studies, Countdown. And what's the other one called? The other study is called, um, yes, Barcarol. So I'm gonna do two videos in those as well. So keep your eyes open for those on, uh, on YouTube. So all that remains to be said is Chilio!